My name is Rosemary Wana Sonia. I attended an agribusiness short course in Australia in, from uh, August last year, 2017, and uh, I finalized it in uh, April this year. It was a, a course on uh, value chain development. That is one of the approaches that we've been using in the agricultural sector. And uh, the course gave us a, a lot of insight into the challenges that affecting the agricultural value chains. As part of my work plan on return, I chose a value chain on cage fish. This is a value chain that we've been impl implementing in the last five years. And uh, as we are closing the program that I'm implementing, we realize there are still a lot of challenges, especially when it comes to aligning the value chain to address the consumer needs. And this is where the course that I attended in uh, Australia really came handy. I came and together with my colleagues, we were able to do a rapid value chain analysis on the cage fish. And out of that exercise, we were able to unearth quite a lot of interesting uh, developments that throughout the five years were never, you know, issues that really mattered in terms of addressing the value chain. One of the issues that came across in terms of when you are addressing the issues of the fingerlings production, the consumers are keen on looking at the size of the fish, the color of the fish, and these are issues that when the fingerling producers are doing their work in the hatcheries, there is very little attention to address these issues. Not because they were ignored them, but it's, it's not something that they realize really mattered to the consumer. When it comes to production issues, one of the issues that we realize is the consumer really does not like fish that looks so dark. And uh, when we looked at this issue in details, we realized one of the issues that bring, uh, brings about the color, the color, the dark color is the density in the cages. Members have really been appreciative in terms of the outcome that came from this. They are very simple things. They don't require so much in terms of investment, but at the end, at the end of the day, it helps us reorientate the cage fish value chain, you know, to respond better to their consumer demands. But one of the things that uh, we've realized the cage fish value chain has also brought in, in terms of job creation. We have had uh, the, the residents around here mainly rely on capture fish. And because of the challenges that are in the lake, the population of fish, especially tilapia, has really gone down. And so cage fish has come in to bolster that production. And we have found the youths who are previously doing uh, capture fish, they go toil the whole night. Now they are employed either as uh, feeders, they are doing the harvesting, they are doing the cleaning, gutting, and uh, even in fabrication of the cages, they are heavily employed. And so you find somebody who never previously didn't have a steady income he can talk of about 6,000, 7,000 shillings per month just because of the cage value chain. I'm Adyang Awadi Evans, the project manager of Oreco Limited Company. It deals with the culturing of fish in floating cages in Lake Victoria. We decided that now, instead of now making the small cages of two by two, we were to fabricate a big cage which is environmental friendly and uh, Instead of using the metal, metallic ones, we decided to use the, uh, the HPD cage, cage made of pipes which are HPD, and it is a secular cage that I'm now holding. This cage here has got a capacity of 90,000 uh, fish, and already we've entered it through the market. We have an outlet in Nairobi, Siokimau, where we harvest our fish and we take them there. Then we can sell to the wholesalers and to retailers we are being connected with other actors in the value chain. So far, the fish has got high market, high demand, but the supply is very down in Kenya, still very low. And uh, the capture fisheries has also gone very down. Nowadays, the fishermen go into the lake, they don't come with the fish. So with value chain that we've created, that we are attending, we are able to connect with the best actors, those who can provide us with the best services. I'm so grateful to the Australian government, uh, Awards Africa, DFAT, for this opportunity that they gave us. The relationships that we have created in Africa and outside Africa, and we are still benefiting from those relationships. 
our professors who are uh, training us in Australia, we are still in contact, you know, through emails and all that, and they continue to support us. So for me, the relationship has not ended. I think it is something that we are going to benefit from the time we initiated this. Up to the time now, we'll be able to say we have developed a very stable value chain, fish value chain that the Australian government and even the professors who taught us are proud about. Thank you so much.